Hi sugar friends, welcome back to my channel. For this tutorial today, I'm gonna to show you how I made this edible wallpaper cake. This is on buttercream and I also added some stenciling. I have done similar cakes to this on fondant, but this time I wanted to do it on buttercream and I also included a fault line and one single fresh rose. But first of all, let's talk about the supplies I have. I am in collaboration with Kutek right now for this video and they sent me this box of supplies and I'm going to tell you all about them. This is the turntable that you would get. They have a shop on Amazon. Now this turntable is fine. I think it's a good turntable. It's a good beginning turntable, but I would add a non-stick or non-skid mat on the bottom and on top to keep things from moving around. And then they gave me some spatulas and some piping bags. And these piping bags are reusable. That is kind of neat. An arrangement of piping tips and a little guide on how to use those piping tips, what you would get from them. And also a few scrapers and one texturizing comb. Now, if you would like to, you can get your own. And I will put an affiliate link in my description of this video where you can get a discount, which would be awesome. So let's get started on the cake though. And I am using a, the reusable bag to pipe the buttercream onto my already stacked and crumb coated cake. This is a four layer, six inch cake. And then I just smoothed it down with the spatula and then I am using my scrapers, my plastic scrapers and this acrylic one. Since it's a taller cake, the scrapers that they supplied are fine. They're nice, but they are um, not as tall as I needed for this cake. So I'm using a variety of techniques here or a variety of tools. And once you get that done, go ahead and put it in your refrigerator and or freezer, freezer preferably. No, actually this time I take it back, refrigerator so that it does not have condensation. Now to make this um, gold paint, I'll call it paint, that we're gonna use to do the stencil with, it's just, I will put a link for the recipe in my description box also. This is not my creation, but it works really well. It's just Everclear and some um, piping gel and some luster dust, and you can do whatever color of luster dust you want. And I did notice if you overmix it, it becomes dull, so don't overmix that. And these are just edible sheets that I printed off from Shutterstock on my computer. There are some uh, free downloadable options, but uh, I find that the better ones are on websites that you actually have to pay for. So it just depends on what you're looking for and what you find. And I printed it with edible paper or edible ink on the edible paper. And I'm just cutting off those extra pieces. And I'm gonna piece this together like wallpaper. That's kind of why I'm calling it the wallpaper because we're gonna overlap it and try to get our patterns to match up. You can see two of them on the right worked. The ones on the left, I just kinda had to make it look like it's gonna work. And this is my mesh stencil. Again, I'll put a link in my description box. And I'm using the gold on top of this mesh, mesh stencil. I think this would not work so well on a regular plastic stencil. The mesh is the way to go because of the thickness of the um, product that you're putting on there. You wouldn't want it to sneak underneath a plastic stencil, but it works great for these, um, mesh stencils, which are fantastic. And I kind of liked having the pattern underneath with the accent of the gold. You could do any, like I said, any luster that you want. Uh, it kind of looks oriental to me. That was not my intention, but it kind of gives me the kind of oriental vibe. I don't know if it's the colors. I don't know. But this time, I, for this one, I used the brush to apply it. And I found that that worked a little bit better. Either one works. You can use a spatula or a paintbrush. And it's best to work from the inside out with these stencils so that they do not move around on you. Now these stencils are meant for, um, really for fondant to be used on fondant, but they work great for this. And I set it aside to dry for a little bit. It didn't quite dry completely, but it dried enough that I could, I could handle it. And I just lined them up again and use my X-Acto knife to kind of score where I want this fault line to be. And it's just an uneven line that I cut across all three of them. And the reason I lined them up together is so that it would be continuous throughout. And I just brushed on a little shortening. That's all I used, some shortening on top of your crusted over chilled buttercream. And just delicately place it on there. You don't have to do a whole lot. This is a very easy technique, honestly. If you can get your hands on the edible images, this is a very easy technique. And you're gonna wanna overlap your pieces just a little bit. See that front piece, that first piece I did was the front. So I wanted it to overlap the two pieces on the sides on top so that when you're looking at it from the front, you don't see any ridges 
of where the, the pieces meet. Does that make sense? I hope it does. Now I just cut off the excess. Now this is great for um, a version of this, but this is, this is one of those versions that if you're not gonna back it with fondant, I would do this as close to uh, pickup time as you possibly can and store it either at room temperature or in the refrigerator, a dry refrigerator, because condensation from your fridge can make this kind of bubble up and buckle. So definitely, if you can leave it at room temperature, that would be preferred. And then I'm just using some more of the, um, actually this time I'm using the Everclear, just Everclear with the luster dust to kind of outline that fault line, do a little bit on the top and a little bit on the bottom. Now with these supplies, the Kutex supplies, I do want to mention that they are good. They're really good for a beginner. If this is your first set of tools, they're perfect for that. Now, if you're doing more advanced cakes, heavier cakes, 3D cakes, or wedding cakes, I would not suggest it for that because of stability. They're not made out of metal, so they're a little bit more, um, they would bend under the pressure a little bit potentially, but they, it does spin really well. I do have to say it does have a good spin to it. It doesn't get caught up and jerky as you are doing your buttercream. I just wanted to add, you know me, add a little extra something. So I put a little bit of the gold sugar crystals around the very bottom. You don't have to do that part. I debated, but I thought, why not? I always want to add one extra little thing. Since I knew I was doing just the singular flower, you know, I like to overdo things. <laughs> so the singular flower is something that I have a hard time wrapping my mind around. But I made little U-shaped hooks with the floral wire to attach the rose. And this is a good way to open up your flower. If you get them and they're not very open, turn it upside down and spin it. It really widens up your rose, it really opens it up. And then I know I have some wires in there, so you would want to tell your customer that there are some wires in there so they know to remove them. And I'm just kind of using the leaves to kind of strategically hide where those hooks are. And I think it's gorgeous. I think it's a really wow effect with pretty minimal effort. And remember to go down to my link in the description box if you would like to purchase the Kutex supplies. And I hope you liked it, guys. And please like and subscribe and share. And we'll catch you next time. So thank you guys so much for taking the time to watch my video. And if you'd like to watch some other videos, go ahead and click on the link to one of these other videos shown here. And if you would like to... Check out my other social media. I am on Facebook and Instagram under the same name, Sophisticates by Mary. And please take the time to share, like, subscribe, and hit the notification bell so that you know when I upload another video. Thank you so much. And we'll catch you on the next tutorial.